We will begin today with the first book. This is called The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. And it was actually written in 2010, but he puts an afterword in it that he wrote in May 2011. And I'll share that with you in a few moments. Uh, so this is still, uh, even though it's, it was written a year, a year ago, it is still, in fact, a very provocative book. The ultimate question in the book is, as we explore and enjoy the bounties of the Internet, are we also sacrificing our ability to read and think deeply? Now, what the book starts with is a, uh, a feeling that this guy remembers when he saw 2001 A Space Odyssey. That's the Stanley Kubrick movie that some of you may remember from the uh, late 60s. And he starts the book by saying, Dave, stop, stop. Will you stop, Dave? Will you stop? So the supercomputer Hal, do you all remember this movie? Supercomputer Hal pleads with the implacable astronaut Dave Bowman in a famous and poignant scene near the end of the movie. Bowman, having nearly been sent to a deep space death by the malfunctioning machine, is calmly, coldly disconnecting the memory circuits that control its artificial brain. Dave, my mind is going, Hal says. Poor lonely, I can feel it, I can feel it. And then what this author says is, I can feel it too. <laughs> Over the last few years, I've had an uncomfortable sense that someone or something has been tinkering with my brain, remapping the neural circuitry, reprogramming the memory. My mind isn't going as far as I can tell, but it's changing. I'm not thinking the way I used to think. And so what he talks about in the afterword of the book, and this is one of the things I enjoy about doing book synopses, I just reorganize the book uh, the way I think it ought to be. So I'm, I'm going to the end of the book, and I'm telling you what he says at the end, which is the afterword. And he, what he talks about is, is in the time that he has written the book, that there has been an interesting change in software. And what he says is, is software programmers have been writing applications intended to shield us from the net's distraction. There are some you can install that switch off your internet connection or restrict your access to social networks for hours at a time, allowing you to complete a job or follow a train of thought without interruption. And there's new browser plugins that extract online text from the web's clutter, lending the screen to a bit of the tranquility that characterizes the printed page. And then he says this, there's something funny and a little sad about looking to software to curb our technological appetites, to give us a virtual backbone, and it remains to be seen how broadly these apps will come to be used. I'll end today with the chapter about Google, because he talks about the church of Google, and he talks about the founders of Google who were very interested in uh, artificial intelligence and making a HAL-like machine from 2001 Space Odyssey that can be connected directly to our brain. And this is from an interview in the book with one of the Google founders. Certainly, if you had all the world's information directly attached to your brain, or an artificial brain that was smarter than your brain, you'd be better off. And his name is uh, Larry Page. He told a convention of scientists that Google is really trying to build artificial intelligence and to do it on a large scale. And obviously this author is not excited about that. That is, that is not what the, he wants to happen. And as you can see on the presentation outline, he really questions what this is all about. Is intelligence the output of a mechanical process? Is intelligence a series of discrete steps that can be isolated, measured, and optimized? In Google's world, which is the world we enter when we go online, there's little place for the pensive stillness of deep reading or the fuzzy indirection of contemplation. Ambiguity is not an opening for insight, but a bug to be fixed. The human brain is just an outdated computer that needs a faster processor and a bigger hard drive and better algorithms to steer the course of its thought. And the idea that we would be better off if our brains were supplemented or replaced by artificial intelligence or a huge software program may be as unsettling to you as it is to this author, but my bet is you'll probably still use it. Uh, that's what the synopsis is of what the internet is doing to our brains, The Shallows by Nicholas Clark. I hope you found that book and synopsis useful to you.